tire testing program at the Tire Rack dates all the way back to 1995, so at this point it's nearly 30 years old. And from the beginning, there has always been a track component to our testing. Uh, originally, it was set up in the parking lot of the building that we were in. You know, it was a uh, course set up with cones, so it was very much like a typical autocross. Of course, now we're in our newer facility. We have our dedicated test track right in our front yard. But at 30 to 35 seconds per lap, it's still closer to a standard autocross. We, of course, push every tire to its absolute limits, but we're not seeing the high speeds that you would get at a track night or HPDE event. And our results on our track have always very closely mirrored what drivers seem to experience in the real world. So we know there's that correlation there. But honestly, you know, that's, that's not the tire rack way. That's not really good enough. We want to be able to say, when we tested the tires on the track, this is what we found out. We don't want to say, yeah, drivers are finding this when they drive on track. We want to be able to say, when we tested this product on the track, this is what we found. And so in 2022, the opportunity finally presented itself. We took uh, our testing program on the road up to a track that's in Southwest Michigan. Uh, it was two days of intense driving and we were so happy with the results in this inaugural trip that we expect it to be a regular part of our test season from this point forward. To get the most out of our testing and also ensure our BRZs were ready for all day use on the track, we made some minor modifications in the days leading up to our test. We added white line adjustable camber bolts and gave all four cars identical alignments with two degrees of negative static camber at the front wheels. The added negative camber would use more of the tire's contact patch through turns, enhancing traction and also improving wear. We chose front and rear TR Select brake kits with Pock DTC60 pads and Centric 120 series rotors. We installed them and properly bedded them in to make sure we could confidently slow our cars without any fade that would interfere with our results. Once those important items were addressed, we were ready to hit the track. To start the test, we had the new for 22 and highly anticipated Bridgestone Potenza RE71 RS, and as it turns out, it was a good place to start. The Potenza RE71 RS was the first tire of the day, and it really set the bar for the whole test. It was easily one of the top tires in terms of outright grip, but more importantly, it was very usable. With the Bridgestones installed, the handling of our BRZs was almost perfectly neutral. It used all four tires to maximize speed through every element of a corner, and it always felt planted and stable. The steering wasn't as precise as some of the other options, but that was easy to overlook in light of all its other attributes. The second tire in our test was the Continental Extreme Contact Force, and we're always happy to test this tire because everybody in our team just really likes driving it. Our team loves driving the Extreme Contact Force on our track, and we love turning laps on the bigger track with it too. The steering could possibly be the best in the category. On top of that, it was so easy to drive and maximize everything the tire had to offer that our drivers were immediately comfortable and very consistent. Continental will be the first to tell you the Extreme Contact Force was designed for longevity and not outright speed, and it was noticeably down on traction and off the pace compared to the fastest tires in the test. Next up was the Dunlop Dereza Z3 and it's been on the market for a while and it's kind of like an old friend where you know what to expect from it. We've driven it so many times. The Dereza Z3 is one of the oldest tires in the test and it was great to drive, but it just couldn't keep up with the newer products on the market. The steering was linear and precise and it responded intuitively to inputs. The tire's balance and likely the lower grip allowed the driver to rotate the vehicle exactly as much as was needed. Even so, if we started chasing the lap times of the faster products, it was easy to overdrive and start to get a little ragged. The next tire up was the Falcon Azenus RT615K Plus. Another tire that's been on the market for a considerable amount of time, Falcon is keeping it around as a reliable, value-priced option for drivers who track their cars, but aren't out to set the absolute fastest lap possible. Based on our experience, that's exactly what it is. It was probably the easiest tire to drive in the whole test, and was just as happy being driven at 80% or 110%. The breakaway was gradual, and it was so easy to control beyond the limit, it was really forgiving of any mistake the driver made. It wasn't particularly fast, but then again it wasn't intended to be. Next up was the Falcon Azenus RT660. It's a newer tire on the market and looking to make a name for itself, and it wants to do that by being fast. And as it turns out, in our testing, it was. And unlike its older brother, it is designed for drivers who want to set the fastest lap possible. 
our drivers loved the nicely weighted, precise steering. Its response to inputs was near immediate, which was mostly a good thing, but sometimes it could be a bit too much and resulted in some understeer at corner entry. The traction was very strong and balance leaned a little bit towards oversteer, primarily when exiting turns, and the Azenus RT660 set the second fastest laps of the test. The next tire we tested was the Hankook Ventus RS4, and everybody knows that tire. Everybody knows what it does, what it doesn't do, uh, and in our testing, it lived up to its reputation. The Ventus RS4 is legendary for lasting a very long time in track use. The flip side of that is it does give up some grip in the name of longevity, and its laps were a significant step back from the fastest tires in the test. The steering was pretty vague, and it loved to be driven with the tail out. It was easy to drive in that it was forgiving and you could hold a drift in it all day long, but trying to drive it at exactly 100% was actually a difficult task. The Kumo X to V730 was the next tire that we tested, and it's good. It's really good. Every member of our test team had great things to say about the X to V730. The window of grip was huge and it delivered consistent traction lap after lap. The steering was direct and really turned down to the apex with authority and had a satisfyingly neutral balance on our BRZs. The list of minor changes we'd make was very short. We'd always like more outright traction and some of our team wished the Kumo was a little better at combined inputs. The next tire to test was the Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2 Connect 240. And of course the Pilot Sport Cup line, you know, that has this, this huge lineage or this history behind it. And in our track testing, it was a satisfying tire to drive. The Pilot Sport Cup 2 Connect 240, in addition to having the longest name in the test, was also easy and fun to drive for our team. Its balance was neutral to a little pushy, so you could give it quite a bit of slip angle, but it always felt planted right up to the limit. Once pushed too hard, it would typically dissolve into understeer as its default behavior. Turn-in was linear, though not as immediate as a lot of the other tires, but the steering did communicate very well with the driver. Ultimately, it ended up setting lap times that were mid-pack. The Nexen Enfera Sport R was the next tire that we tested, and Nexen of course has kind of their performance roots in, in drift, and our testing of the Enfera Sport R showed that they can make tires that grip too. Our team had mixed feelings about the Enfera Sport R. It was very fast, with excellent cornering traction and what felt like the strongest braking in the whole test. The steering drew a lot of negative comments though. It was vague and indirect, and it felt out of phase with itself. After turn-in, there was a tangible delay before the tire responded, and then it would sort of lean over and take a set. It had a wide plateau of grip, but the behavior took some getting used to before our drivers felt really comfortable with it. The Yokohama Advan AO52 was the next tire that we tested, and of course we had high expectations going into the test. Uh, once it was over and we looked at the times, we knew the results could cause some serious controversy, especially in the enthusiast community but we had the same results for all three of our drivers. The bottom line is the tire wasn't as fast as several others in the test because it didn't allow us to get back to throttle as quickly as we needed to to set fast laps. The traction at the rear always overpowered the front and pushed the nose wide from mid-corner all the way to corner exit. That meant our drivers had to wait an excruciatingly long time to put the power down and it hurt lap times. With some suspension tuning to dial out the understeer, it likely would have been near the top but as is, it was about a second off the pace. The bottom line is the tire wasn't as fast as several others in the test because it didn't allow us to get back to throttle as quickly as we needed to to set fast laps. The last tire that we tested was the Yokohama Advan Neova AD09, and it was brand new. In fact, it, it barely made the cutoff to be included in our test, so we didn't really know what to expect. The Advan Neova AD09 is another tire that places more emphasis on longevity than outright speed, and its average lap time was right in the mix with that group of competitors. The steering was linear and felt natural in the way it built response. Overall, it was balanced, but similar to the other Yokohama tire in the test, it was limited by front-end traction. With slightly lower grip all around, the rear didn't overpower the front quite as predominantly, but understeer was still its default characteristic. Even so, it was generally a good all-around tire that was nice to drive on the track. If it lasts as long as Yokohama expects it will, it'd be great for track nights and HPDE drivers. We had two days up at the track and one full day dedicated to nothing but testing. And we ended up with a really nice set of data for almost every relevant tire in the extreme performance summer category. 
There were 11 tires in the test and they sort of fell into kind of three distinct groups. Um, there was the group at the, the pointy end that were the fastest of the fast tires. And of course the Bridgestone Potenza RE71 RS led that group and the whole test. Uh, also included in that uh, would be the Falcon Azenus RT660, the Nexon Infera Sport R, the Kumo X to V730, and the Yokohama Advan AO52. Next, there were the, uh, the tires that are a bit more endurance focused. Um, they give up a little bit of speed in the name of more longevity. And that would be the Continental Extreme Contact Force, the Hankook Ventus RS4, the Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2 Connect 240, and the Yokohama Advan Neova AD09. The next two tires uh, would kind of be the, the just for fun type tires. And that's the Dunlop Dereza Z3 and the Falcon Azenus RT615K+. We ended up with good quality results and we're looking forward to adding to our database of lap times as new tires are released in the future. So keep an eye out for the TireX annual track test in addition to the results from our standard test season every summer.